Wednesday Warriors, and it's me, Ariel. And this week, I'm going to be talking about imagery, which is even more obscure a topic than drawing your emotions or writing your emotions. When I say imagery, what I'm talking about is looking and really paying attention to what you see. Noticing what's around you, being self-aware, but also being aware of your surroundings. Using all of your senses to embrace the environment around you or to see what it's telling you or what you can learn from it. If you read something, being mindful of what you read instead of letting it go in one ear and out the other. If you are looking at photography or art or even websites, really paying attention to what emotions they create, what kind of a mood they put you in and why that might be. Pay attention to what inspires you, what angers you, what frustrates you, what motivates you, what makes you really happy and full of joy. Something you can try is really immersing yourself in the visual world. Really trying something different if you find that you don't want to draw or that doesn't really speak to you and you don't want to write, that doesn't really speak to you. You can still immerse yourself in a world that is creative without actually physically using your hand or your mind to create something. And it can still be equally as powerful. What you watch on TV, looking at old photo albums, those are things that create a kind of response within you. And normally we go through our day without really paying attention to those responses. We let them happen, we move on to the next. We let those happen, we move on to the next. And that's our day. And we don't really stop to think about what's happening. You can also stimulate your senses by doing things that are very visually exciting or by, um, you know, using kind of an aromatherapy approach. New smells and scents, candles, oils, soaps, things that maybe are not something that you do normally but might have a certain appeal and then paying attention to what happens after you do those things. There are so many possibilities. One of the things that comes to mind when I think about imagery, and I think about imagery as it relates to recovery or mental health or just overall well-being for all types of individuals out there, I think about vision boards. And I did a video, I think it was probably over a year ago, you know, about a year ago, called Ariel Makes You a Vision Board. And in that video, I step-by-step -step strategically crafted a vision board for you, the viewers. And I chose things for specific reasons, and I explained those reasons, and I showed them to the camera as I added them to the vision board. And when I was done, I had this complete work, this complete board that really said something. It really had a voice. Um, it could have been very healing and therapeutic to someone watching who was in that similar mindset, who knew what I was trying to say, what I was trying to get across. And vision boards are so easy. They're something that we can all do. We don't have to have artistic ability. We don't have to have writing skills. So it's sort of uh, a different option than, you know, drawing your emotions or writing your emotions. And it's just really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the link to Ariel Makes You a Vision Board. And you can watch that older video if you're interested. And you can see step by step what a vision board can be. And of course, that's just one example of a vision board. And it was sort of my message to you. But it was uh, very, I guess, motivational and encouraging in nature. And it did give some ideas for maybe what your own vision board could hold. So I will post that link. But also... I want to talk about tools that are creative, that you can use to help yourself and to help learn yourself. I wrote an article for Libro Network, and it was a recovery article, and it was about creative outlets. In fact, the article was called A Recipe for Recovery, Creative Outlets. And I talked about a whole bunch of different creative outlets that really have their merits. So I'm going to touch on some of the things that I talked about in that article from 2013. The very first thing that I talked about in that article 
was vision boards. And I went in, I was explaining that basically the direction of the board is up to you. Just like I said with, uh, with writing and withdrawing your emotions, you get to be the boss. You can create a board with the theme of goals or one that's full of empowering words. You can create a board for the new year or one that has an overarching theme to show what you envision for yourself. It's about envisioning things for you. And you can even create a vision board for specific aspects of your life, like career, or a board for family, or a board for therapy. And it is very beneficial because you get to lead it, and you get to determine where it goes, and you can make new vision boards all the time as your vision changes. A vision board for the year, for example, might show pictures or words to shape your hopes and your plans. Maybe you'll add a picture of a sun to envision a bright year ahead, or maybe it's going to be more of a literal reminder that you're going to go on a much needed vacation. You can add words like home or family, long talks with my best friend, or even a photo of you and a specific friend. Whatever it is that you envision and want to see for the year, whatever it is that you want or that you want more of. And it doesn't have to be a goal. It just has to be what you want in your life. So vision boards for a year ahead are a really great alternative to New Year's resolutions. And that's something that I always like to push because New Year's resolutions can have kind of a negative feel to them sometimes, especially the way that they're talked about in our general society. Basically, rather than focusing on a flaw or a failure, you're creating a vision for you and you're surrounding yourself with love. And you can be very creative with it. You can use post-it notes, you can print out quotes, you can use colored index cards, markers, crayons, paint, whatever feels right for you. Your vision board could be an 8x10 piece of paper, or it can be the size of a whole window or a whole wall. It's whatever you choose it to be, and you can, you can hang it, or you can keep it tucked away. You can put it on your refrigerator where you'll see it every day in the same spot. It's completely up to you. But the, the best thing I think about a vision board is that it's positive reinforcement that comes from you. And the more you see your vision board, the more that vision will stay with you as a guide. Another creative outlet that I talked about is something I call a destruction day. So if you're in the mood for something really creative, you can try hosting a destruction day. You gather other recovery-minded people and you tap into your courage all together. You tell everyone to bring something that's been a hindrance to their recovery and you destroy it. Whether it's a scale, a book of tallied calories, a bin of magazines that make you feel worthless, a pair of two small jeans that you shouldn't ever want to fit into again, whatever it is, destroy it. And the key here is to turn the destruction into a celebration. You're used to the self-destruction, so basically you're turning to destruction of a different kind. And it's good because you're going to have moral support, collective motivation, and you can smash a hammer onto that scale. You can rip that book of calories to pieces. You can tear up those unhealthy magazines. And you can hack into those old jeans with scissors. Then when you're all done, you have all these bits and pieces of trash, but you'll have a little bit of yourself back. So those are just a couple examples um, that come to mind when I think of imagery, when I think of immersing yourself into something new, something creative in a whole new way. I hope if you're feeling creative, you'll try one of those ideas, or maybe they'll even inspire you to think up some things of your own. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time.